Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I control the motor speed on my Sony TCM939 portable cassette recorder. Um, how do I do that? I use this little box. Uh, there you go, the motor speed controller. But before we get to that, Controlling motor speed on a DC motor, a bit like the one that's in the cassette player. If you take the um, simple basic approach that uh, sounds logical and you simply put a potentiometer in line with the power supply to the motor, you will discover, like I did, that the slightest little tweak in the resistance, you know, on, on the pot there, and the motor just simply stops. It will slow down a little bit. And you'll think, ah, oh, it's starting to work. And then, you know, a fraction of a turn, and that's it, it cuts out. So I did some research to find out why this was happening and why my naive logic didn't work. And it turns out that in order to stop the motor stalling altogether, you need to use a pulsed supply. So rather than dropping the voltage off, the way you do it is you pulse the voltage and in between each pulse the effect is like causing the motor to stall but if you bring the pulse back before it's completely stalled the smoothed out effect if you like is the, the overall effect is to slow down the motor. And the common way to do this is to use pulse width modulation, something which, if you're into your uh, analog modular synths or anything that's come to that, um, you will have heard about pulse width modulation. So you get kind of a, a square wave type pulse and you can alter the, the period of time that it's, it's at maximum voltage and the period of time that it's at minimum voltage. So basically you're chopping the voltage up, which is what we need to do to control the motor. Now the vast majority of the circuits that I've found online all use a 555 counter to produce the basic square wave and then provide a potentiometer to adjust the pulse width of those square waves. So for instance, on, on this system that I use, um, it, it works on a, a six volt power supply. So what you're always getting, you're always getting the 6 volts, but you're turning the 6 volts on and off at variable rates, which has the overall effect of slowing down the motor. Great. So I went and had a hunt around, like I say, and found quite a few circuits, and they're all pretty much the same. Um, this is just one example of, of a circuit and you can see um, although it looks slightly complicated because it shows the uh, um, the internals of a 555 rather than just drawing it as a, a block um, but basically the the 555 set up as an oscillator to produce a square wave the potentiometer that you see there is basically controlling the, uh, the pulse width um, and then there's a, um, a TIP122 Darlington transistor there. The reason that the transistor is on the output to the motor is because uh, the 555 counter um, will sink some current, but if the motor draws something that's bigger than about 200 milliamps, um, the chip really can't handle it. Um, so we, we use the Darlington transistor basically to to sink the current and not burn out the chip. Um, but it's a very, very simple circuit. And so I took this basic design and I did a strip board layout and the strip board layout looks like this. So very simple. Um, I built the circuit and the raw circuit as, as, as built looks pretty much like this before I put it in the box. So that was the the controller. I'll show you the box and, and kind of what it looks like when it's all boxed up in a moment when we demo how it works. Um, but then that's only one half of it. For the other half of it I had to go inside the 
tape player. Now, fortunately, on this particular model, everything's nicely labeled and easily accessible. So this is what it looks like inside. And all I've done here is I've taken the output from the circuit board that would normally go to the motor. I've put that onto the switched contact on a jack socket. The tip contact on the jack socket, I then connect that directly to the motor. And then there's the earth, the ground that, that goes off to the negative connection for the power supply to the motor. So what happens here is when I plug a 3.5 jack into my control box, there's a little socket on the bottom of the box there, I plug it into a socket which I've mounted in the side of the tape player, which I'll show you in a moment. And what that does, that the normally closed switch, which is taking the power from the internal circuit board, is opened, so it then takes power from the control box and then I can control the speed of the motor. So let's move over to uh, the table and we'll have a look at the actual box itself and what all the controls and layouts are and then we'll plug it into the tape deck and show you what it sounds like when you start to control the motor speed. This is the box a little bit more uh, up close. Um, simple controls on the box and um, there's the speed control so fully around clockwise is is actually it's full voltage well it's always full voltage I said it's voltage chopped up but basically what that means is that the motor should be running at normal speed um, inside the, there's, there's a power on off switch and a, and a LED to let me know that the power's on and then you've got the socket which will provide the pulsed voltage from the uh, speed controller which then goes and plugs into a socket on the side of the tape player which is what you saw wired up in uh, on, on the internal um, so inside the box now I don't know how well you can see this um, but you've got it's there's four one and a half volt batteries providing the six volt. Then you've got the circuit board of the five 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 chip and the power transistor, the Darlington transistor, and then you just got the controls on the back of the lid there. Um, so um, very small, very compact, very simple. Um, the point is, the there's power supply in the cassette. There's there's four one and a half volt cells in the cassette as well, uh, which provide the six volts to run the cassette player. So that will run all of the cassette player with nothing else plugged in. Um, I'll start that off in a moment. Um, but you need to maintain that power supply because obviously there's not just the motor spinning in there you've got to drive the electronics in there which will do all the amplification so you can get the output from the cassette deck the output from this does not provide power to anything other than the motor because if you started to kind of cut down the power to the amplifier you get all sorts of well, it just wouldn't work properly there'd be all sorts of weird things going on i've not tried it but yeah it probably end up doing some damage i don't know um, I'm not an expert on these things, which is why I steal other people's ideas. Sorry, borrow and implement and build upon other people's ideas. Um, I, there's no intention of stealing anything. I make absolutely no money out of any of this, so I'm not kind of taking somebody else's work and selling it as my own. I never claim it to be my own. This is purely for um, kind of my own use. But as I say, that the, the, the there's loads and loads of circuit diagrams on how to use a 555 counter to provide DC motor control. Um, so it is, it is pretty generic. It's yeah. Anyway, um, I'll I'll start the tape player playing as normal to start with, um, so you can kind of hear what the normal output sounds like. The track that's playing, by the way, is um, a track off my latest project.
prog rock album. I'll put a link to the album if you're interested in finding out what other stuff I get up to. Um, but this track, it's got um, kind of um, acoustic piano, electric guitar and software synths in there. So it provides a nice kind of mixture so you can hear what's going on. So, it's called Raindrops in a Blue Sky by the way. If I plug the output in. Now what will happen, because there's no voltage from this, if I plug this in here, that's it switching the power off, it's actually just switched the motor off. So if I leave it switched to full speed, you can hear that we're actually now, it's back to, it appears to be running at normal. But, the power from the internals in the cassette are just driving the amplification circuits in the cassette. The power for the motor is coming from this box here. So if I now start to turn the speed control, you should hear the difference. By now, if you just tried the um, the simple potentiometer trick, the, the motor would have just stopped dead after that, that very first turn that I did. You've got a much wider range of control now. Now we're getting into the realms of some real kind of... almost kind of tape loop drones um, which is uh, one of the ideas I've got using this is when I'm, when I'm using my tape loops to record a tape loop I can slow it down and almost use the tape loop as a, as a drone kind of idea or, or to manipulate vocals to give them more impact tape is running really well, sorry the motor and hence the tape is running really slow now. You can actually get down to a point where it will still stall. There we go, stalled it. Um, so I've got about a third of the control left to go. Um, if I bring it back up.
we are back up to normal speed again. The one thing I can't do with this particular box is I can't actually increase the speed. I can only decrease the speed. But hopefully, as you heard, you can get some really interesting effects. Sounds particularly nice on this, I'll just turn it right down. Those tinkly bells. No longer tinkly. Even slightly slowed down brings a whole different feel to the music. Guess there we are again, back up to normal speed. So yeah, there you go. Um, how to control the motor speed on uh, your tape deck. Very simple circuit. I've shown you the schematic. So I've shown one one version of a schematic. Um, I'll, I'll put some links to uh, to the schematics I found. Um, I've shown you a, a, a strip board layout that, as you can hear, obviously works. Um, I've shown you how I've uh, ad adapted the actual tape player itself to uh, to take the input. So. It's actually quite simple. Once you understand what you need to do, rather than just sticking a pot in in line with the uh, supply voltage, once you understand how to do it, it's not that difficult. I mean, I managed to do it, so I'm sure you can. Go on, have a go. Build your own. <laughs>